This is Investment 360. We're now joined by Michael Dodd, Investment Analyst at Access, coming to us live from Cape Town. Still with me, Vickers Murray from Stratasist. Michael, thank you so very much for joining us. All this drama that is occurring in, in Europe and, of course, uh, a few worries coming through from U the U.S. and worries about a hard landing or soft landing out of China. How is this in uh, affecting investors in South Africa, the, the mentality, the thought process? Are you finding a more risk-averse investor in South Africa at this point? Well, I think naturally what you what you find in, in times like this and, and times that we've got is that it's been a very sort of emotional time. You've had markets have been very sentiment driven and it's, it's driven by, you know, whatever news flow comes out and, and it, it, it's happening on an almost hour to hour basis now. Um, so naturally what you get with clients and, and the, the clients that you do see and the clients that you do interact with is, is with this sort of almost information overload is that um, clients are, you know, their, their in investment behavior does get affected by all of the, the news that, you know, they're, they're sort of exposed to on, on this kind of basis. And, and it, it's almost been a bit of a roller coaster ride for clients, and especially with what's going on in, you know, Europe in particular, and where we've had Greece. And, and Greece, first there was the, the bailout plan, and then the bailout plan got put on hold for a referendum, and then the referendum got canceled. And, you know, it's been a, it's been a very sort of up and down time as, as, far as, as far as Greece goes. And I mean, the, the big news coming out of Greece yesterday being that the, the, the prime minister had stepped down um, in, in favor of creating a, a government of national unity to, to help, you know, get the, the international funding that they need and to help Greece avoid, you know, any, any sort of economic collapse. Um, so we've had Greece and, and more recently over the, the last few days we've had Italy which you know the, the, yeah. the, the previous speaker on the previous show spoke uh, in, in some detail about um, but also Italy with you know being thrust into the spotlight not just because uh, and of the, the scale of it because you've got Italy is currently the world's third largest bond market lagging only behind that of the US and Japan so just to give you some sort of indication as, the, as to the severity yeah. of that but what the, the almost the market reaction has been has not been just to you know the the economic situation that Italy finds themselves in, but also the the position of political instability, where we have the the rumours that you know Berlusconi is going to step down, and then Berlusconi comes out hours later and denies denies any kind of rumours. And um, I mean it's a it's an almost ongoing saga where the, there's news flow coming out every single day. So it's it's almost natural that you know investors find themselves. Uh, fairly jittery at, at this point yeah. in time. But my, my question would be, uh, Michael, is, is what do you do for your investors? Do you actually make their portfolios l more conservative to give them a, some kind of comfort? Or do you talk them through um, this is actually a good time to buy because the blood is in the streets? Uh, how do you deal with this in terms of your investor relationships? I think in, in terms of the investor relationships and, and the, the relationships that Axis would have with their particular clients, and I mean, you'd like to hope that you know, the, the clients that you have sort of, sort of share the same investment philosophy that, um, that, you, would, that you would do. And you know, the Axis philosophy being one of longer term investment focus, um, investing through the, through the noise and through the cycles, and you know, remaining, you know, in well diversified investment portfolios. I think as, as, an in, or as advisors to our clients, what we try and do is sort of discourage any kind of market timing approach. And I think what we've seen in, in markets over the course of the last few months um, kind of highlights that. And, and you look at, you know, what happened in South African equity markets in September. And, and it happened around the globe as well, where you had equity markets down, you know, significantly in September. Now, if you had, as an investor had panicked at that you know, particular point in time and, and taken all of your money out of the equity market, both you know, locally and globally, and, and moved it all to you know, your, your safer or less risky asset classes such as cash, you'd have missed out on the entire market move up that you, you would have seen in October. Um, and I think what you, what you say is, is right, Vickers, as well, in that you know, what generally happens in times of high volatility, as history has shown us, is that times of high volatility are generally the times where investors are presented with the, the better buying opportunities you know, based on, on market valuations. Um, and, and maybe just another question in, in terms of 
of your own business, do you see people actually using more advice coming to you and saying, you know, things are so uncertain and so um, difficult to deal with that I, I need some advice, I can't do this myself, or do you see people just actually clamping down and say cash is king? Well, I think it's at, at times, especially in the type of business that, that Axis has, where you know we have the, the financial planners that have very intimate relationships with their clients, and it really becomes the, the client's prerogative. And if the, the client is, is happy to, you know, to, to sit back and, and you know, deal with the, the investment cycles and, and the volatility as they have it, then that's you know, the, the client's particular choice. But I think it is, a, it is a time, especially where financial planners can add significant value for their clients in almost holding their hand and you know, guiding them through you know, the, the market situation and the, the environment that they, they currently Michael, find Michael, what do you do in. right now with new money with regards to asset allocation? Well, I think with the, with the longer term approach that, that Axis has, and it, it does depend on the, the new money and, and into which particular investment strategy the, the clients go, and it, it is very much dependent on the client's needs and what the client is trying to mm. achieve. Um, so each particular investment strategy has what we would call our strategic asset allocation, which is our, our longer term um, asset allocation view at, that, uh, that we would take to, to ride through the cycles to ensure that the clients meet their objectives and, yeah. and their investment goals. Um, but in terms of, of new money and how portfolios are currently positioned, I mean, you've got to, you've got to take into account the, you know, where markets currently are and where yeah. market valuations currently are in order to determine your, your underweight and your yeah. overweight, your, your tactical tilts in your portfolio. Absolutely. Uh, Vikas, what are you doing with new money right now? Allocating it to the long-term strategic um, <laughs> pattern for, for each client. So what we would do is we, we wouldn't really do anything very different today than we did six months ago or than we did three years ago. So you're not afraid? You don't have angst? Um, I think that the biggest, the, the biggest role of an advisor at this point is to make sure that their clients stay calm and don't do anything funny just because of the, the, the volatility. Because the, the experience over time is that these are the times that you, if you invest in these volatile times, you actually get the best long-term so return. Put so put emotion and so, fear so aside. Take the emotion out of it, yeah. invest uh, in the same way that you would have done two or three or five years ago.